my name is Tanya and this is my channel Just Let Me Sew. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you are new, thank you for coming along and it's great to have you here. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you very much for coming back. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would really love it if you would consider subscribing. That would be great um, so you can join me for my other videos coming up. So I'll start off as always by saying what I'm wearing. Nothing particularly exciting today. This is a self-drafted t-shirt, uh, long sleeve t-shirt with um, fabric I got at the rag market in Birmingham quite a few years ago, uh, just before lockdown happened actually. It's a, just a Ponty Roma. Um, nothing very expensive or special fabric, but it's nice and warm. Okay, so what have I been up to? It feels like quite a while since I've had a proper sit down and um, a chat about what I've been doing on YouTube. It's been quite busy. We've had the Easter holidays, so I've had my two children at home with me for a couple of weeks, so that was quite busy. Um, I've also been quite busy with a couple of job interviews. So if you've been watching my vlogs for a while, you'll know I have been job hunting for the past five months or so. Um, and I had two interviews recently and I got one of the jobs. So that was fantastic. Really, really, really pleased about that. Um, and I thought it might just be nice to share a little thought for other people out there, whether you are also job hunting or perhaps sort of in a process of trying to get somewhere. Um, someone once said to me, keep turning over stones and you will find something. And that's very much something I've had in mind while I've been going through this process of job hunting. Just keep going, put one foot in front of the other. So whether it's job hunting, like I said, or something else that you are going through, um, I think it's important to know that you're not on your own. There are other people who are trying to get through things, whether it's deep or not so deep, just keep going one foot in front of the other, keep turning over those stones and you will find something. So that's my little thought for the day. Um, what else have I been up to? Well, I have actually managed to get a little bit of sewing done, which was wonderful. I went along to the Southern Sewing Social, which is run by Sam, who is Sequin Girly on Instagram and also on YouTube. Her social is run, um, is it Buckinghamshire? I can't remember, it's High Wycombe area. And that was a lovely day out. That was last Sunday, I think it was, and I was working on a blouse. I am taking part in Sew April Blouse. I've got a couple of entries that I need to put on Instagram. Well, I've put one of them on Instagram. I'll show you that in a minute. And then the one that I was working on at the social was one I have made up before, I'll show you. Um, this is McCall's M7325. Let me check that that is it. Yeah, M7325. Um, I will put a picture of me wearing it up here, hopefully, but it's a really pretty blouse. It's It looks quite oversized, but it's not as loose as you would think it is. I made mine up in the size small um, and I did size down a bit. I've talked about this before because I have made this blouse before. I'll try and link the video here. I made it in a green and white gingham check. Um, sorry, gingham is check. <laughs> green and white gingham. Um, and it, it just comes together quite well. Um, there is one tricky bit, which is here, where the sleeve meets the side seam. And um, one viewer did ask me if I would consider doing like a sort of sew along for this. And I might actually try doing it sort of more like a make this top with me rather than like a, a sort of step by step, because most of it is actually quite straightforward. The only bit that I think you need to be careful with is this bit here. Um, as with a lot of the big four patterns, they can be sparse on the instructions. And for this top, it doesn't tell you anything about um, finishing the seams. So what I think if I if I make this again, I will go back and finish all of the seam edges before I sew it together. Because based on the construction, once you've done this bit, it's really, really hard to get in and finish your seams. So I might do a sort of little sew along for this top because it's, it's lovely, it's really, really pretty. This is made up in a black um, broderie anglaise, which I got from Pound Fabrics, I think. I have talked about this fabric before 
in some of my plans and I'm pleased to have got that sewn up because I've had that in my stash for quite a long time. So I was working on this at the social. Um, as sometimes happens to me at socials, <laughs> I've been to my own socials that I run in Red Hill, I've been to one in Woking and then Sam's and at all of those I have made a mistake at every single one because I'm too busy chatting and I don't concentrate and I did I think on this one when I was sewing the panel to the yoke I sewed it right side to wrong side so I had to unpick it all didn't take too long but I was also working on this at my social and I did exactly the same thing when I was attaching one of the sleeves to the yoke I did right side to wrong side so I had to unpick that so that is the one warning if you go to a social is uh, pay attention to what you're doing as well as having a nice chat with people there. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about um, was the trousers that I made up for the Sew Frugal Challenge. So I did release a video on my plans for Sew Frugal and I got most of the things made up that I wanted to. I had on my list a pair of wide leg peppermint pants, which I was doing colour blocking for. I also wanted to make up the Isla Puff sleeve blouse and I did make up a couple of those. I also wanted to make up a bias cut skirt and I did try to make one. I have made two in the past and this one just didn't work out. Um, the, the trouble with sewing anything on the bias is you've got to be super super careful not to handle that fabric too much because it can stretch and I was really careful I cut it out and sewed it literally straight away the same evening and I was so delicate handling it but I think the fabric that I chose just wasn't right it was um a viscose um but more like a viscose crepe so it felt a little bit stretchier than the usual viscose. And I think somewhere along on the line, it just stretched out um, somehow. And when I sewed up that by a seam down the side, there was just so much puckering where it sort of was stretching a little bit. So that one had to be, had to be discarded. <laughs> it didn't work out, but you win some, you lose some, doesn't matter. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to make up was sort of like an oversized, fine knit jumper and I didn't get around to doing that but what I did do was make up a couple of dresses for my daughter so my daughter is five she loves dresses with as much twirliness in the skirt as possible and I did manage to make her some of those up so I will show you um, some of the makes that I did for my sew frugal and I'll start off with the trousers I have shared pictures of my trousers on Instagram if you're not on Instagram, I will insert a picture here for you, but this is them. And I did this color blocking. I shared in my plans video that I'd been looking up ideas of how to use two different colors of denim. And I found these very expensive designer jeans going for like 300 pounds on Google. Um, and I thought, oh, perfect, I can make those. I am now getting sent, because you know how the internet stalks you, I'm now getting sent loads of junk emails from this designer company trying to sell me a £700 jumpsuit made out of a similar sort of denim block work. Yeah, not for me. So these are the um, trousers that I made. I will insert some pictures um, up here, as I said. I wanted to just chat through how I did the colour blocking because it really wasn't that difficult at all. I did talk about in my um, previous video how I kind of winged it a little bit. But if I show you the actual pattern piece, it might make it a bit clearer to you for what I did. So excuse the rustling. So this is the front leg pattern piece. And what I did was I just looked at how much fabric I had. I had these two different colours and a strip, a long strip left over from um, my Persephone and Sunshine jeans that I had made previously. So I couldn't do the whole leg in them. So I was very much just led by how much fabric I had and the width of it. So I worked out here, this line would be enough for me to get um, 
the front piece main bit out of the darker denim and then I had enough of the lighter denim for it to be there. So I drew a line, you can see it here, and I folded the pattern there. And then, excuse the rustling, if I fold it for you, I folded it like that. And then I added a centimetre seam allowance here. I didn't draw it out again, I just winged it with my little seam gauge going down, checking it was just, you know, a centimetre all along. And at the top here, because the pocket piece is on a slight curve, I just made sure it was mirrored. In fact, I think that bit might have been okay. It was this side more. So I did that bit in the dark denim and then I flipped it. And then I had to do, you can see all these folds because I kind of had to concertina it to tuck it all under here. Um, and then this I used for my lighter denim and then the same thing again just on that seam I added a centimetre and then I did the same process on the back so I ended up with it like this so that's the front I've got the side seam still in place there and that's the back where I joined the two colours together on the inside I made sure that I finished them with the overlocker before sewing them together and then pressed it flat and I also top stitched it down which you can't really even notice that's great and then I finished it off with a label which says so slow it's a satiny label and it was from uh, Annie what is Annie's company name she was closing down her shop with all like her haberdashery supplies because she just does teaching now, but I will try and link her here. Um, yeah, so I picked those up when Annie was closing down. Um, and then I just used a standard jeans button. For the button here, if you have ever tried to sew a buttonhole where it's particularly bulky, you might have come across a few problems where your buttonhole foot on your sewing machine doesn't like it. Um, so what I did was what actually you actually see on a lot of ready to wear garments, particularly suit trousers, you see the diagonal button. And that just meant I was able to manipulate where my foot was coming into all of that bulk. Like here, there's quite a bit, not so much there, but mainly there. And it just meant I could get my machine through it without it having a, a paddy and wanting to stop right there. The pattern overall, um, it's a good pattern, peppermint wide leg. I, I like it, I really like it, and I'm making up another pair right now in a, a canvas. There are a couple of errors in the instructions. Um, also, the uh, I think it's just one pattern piece that's labelled incorrectly. The fly and the fly shield are labelled incorrectly. You only need one piece for the fly shield, and it's... No, sorry, it's two for the fly shield and one for the fly or the other way around. So they're just labelled incorrectly. And then it doesn't tell you to finish the edge of one of the pattern pieces, but it shows it in the picture. But really minor details. The construction for the fly is quite interesting. It's a lot, um, not laborious, but it's a bit lengthier than other instructions of how to do the fly. But what I do actually like about it is it tells you to do a lot of hand basting. So basting the zip in place, then basting the fly in place. And I quite like that. I think it's quite nice to slow down and take your time and think about things. So that wasn't too much of a problem for me. So yeah, those are my finished trousers. I really like them. And the color, color blocking, sorry, was actually really easy. So if you wanna give it a try, go for it. Like I said, I felt like I was winging it quite a lot, which shows it wasn't a very, very it wasn't very difficult, so you'd be fine. Give it a go. It was lots of fun. So the other things that I made for So Frugal I mentioned were a couple of dresses for my daughter, which I will grab. And the first one I picked up at a swaps table at the um, Woking Social that I went to, organised by Yvette Blossom Sandwich and Mel, Melanie Keane. So that was completely free fabric. And you can find YouTube tutorials on how to make a little girl's t-shirt dress with gathered skirt 
Um, so I had a look at a couple of those, but actually what I found was most useful was just grabbing something out of her wardrobe, a dress she has really similar to this, and just tracing around it. And you do that just by folding it in half. And then you can either do it onto paper or if you just want to go for it like I did, just do it straight onto the fabric. So that would be on the fold. And then you've got your neckline there. You need to allow your seam allowance along the neck along the shoulder. When you get to the arm side, you can sort of tuck it away. Or what I do is I just start my snip sort of there. And then I go down to the bottom. And then up there, add another snip there. And then when I take the dress off the fabric, I just sort of measure, gauge where the armhole would be and just do it like that. Because with stretch fabric, you can be quite relaxed it doesn't have to be precise like it would be for a woven and this one I had enough fabric to give her a nice gathered skirt I think I did 1.5 for the um, measurement of it of the the width of the bodice I just times that by 1.5 so it has a nice bit of swish for her and then the other dress that I made up was a remnant that I had from a t-shirt I made I made myself it's a this ghost jersey, I think, in this fun animal print. I didn't have as much fabric for this one, so she didn't get such a swirly skirt, but still a little bit bigger. And she also picked out her label for this one, which was another one from Annie's shop. That's gonna focus, it's just a little heart. And she picked that one out herself. So those have been already worn a lot. She really likes them and I know she's going to get a lot of wear out of those in the summer because she just lives in those little t-shirt dresses. They're great to have. So the other thing that I have been working on was a Marnie blouse. I mentioned earlier that I am taking part in So April Blouse, which is run by um, Cloth Edit and Ruan, the Yorkshire Sew Girl, is helping out with that as well. So I love the Marnie blouse. I have made two before and i saw i think it was actually ruan bought a beautiful floral fabric i can't remember where she got it from but something fairly similar popped up from sarah at simple life fabrics and it's this gorgeous double gauze which i will grab now so it's this beautiful double gauze i mean how happy is that fabric it is beautiful I think Sarah has now sold out of this. She did have it in the white colourway. I have shared this fabric when I first bought it um, and I think it has now gone. But I knew I wanted to make Imani up in it. When I saw Ruan making something similar, I thought, yes, that would be perfect. So I went for the ruffle neck. I love the ruffle neck on the Imani. And these ruffles on the side. Now, I'll try and explain what I did with these ruffles because my first ever version I made, I didn't line the ruffles and sure enough, when it's sort of a bit windy or it blows over, you can see the underside of the fabric, which is paler. So the second time I made it, I cut out two and sewed them together and then attached it so it's lined. This version, I was making up the ruffles, not particularly late at night, but I was tired and I did that usual way of cutting out two bits of fabric and I sewed the wrong edges together. So I unpicked all of that. And then I realized, oh, I haven't sewn the wrong edges together. That was right. So I then sewed it again. And then I think I realized, no, no, it was the wrong seam all along. And I just got so frustrated with myself. I thought the easiest way to do it would just be to cut the ruffle on the fold. Do it like that. And that's what I did. Um, I will just pause a sec and see if I can find the Marnie blouse pattern to show you what I mean. This is the Marnie blouse ruffle. And when you cut it out, you would think that that is going to be the outer edge, but it's not. This is actually so the edge that's sewn into your side seam. So your front and your side panels. So you can cut this bit on the fold. You can see it's quite a long piece. You can cut that on the fold and then you've 
got something already nice and easy to then just fold over and, and sew together. Um, you just need to make sure that you take out the seam allowance um, so you don't have it like extra wide, which I didn't do, I forgot to do that. So my ruffles are a little bit wider, but I quite like that. I think it looks quite, quite cool. So after much faffing and uh, head scratching and getting annoyed with myself, I figured out actually an easier way to do it. So I'm really pleased with that. And I will try and insert some photos of me wearing it there. I also inserted a label, which is the new Little Rosy Cheeks label, which everyone's been talking about, it seems. Swing it, shake it, move it, made it. And I thought that was quite, quite appropriate for this blouse because it's such a fun, bold print. Lots of fun. I really, really love this. Really pretty. Um, so that's my Marnie blouse, which I love, and I'm really, really pleased with how that came out. Um, I did want to ask for a little bit of advice about some fabric that I have in my stash. Now, I bought this from Rainbow Fabrics quite a while ago. And if you've watched my vlogs before, you'll know that I have stopped buying from Rainbow Fabrics because I just got a little bit too fed up with their fabric composition descriptions and them just not meeting what they were describing them as at all. And with this particular double gauze that I'm going to show you, it's really, really very wrinkled. Um, the double gauze that I just did my Marnie blouse in is much flatter and I have heard someone say that double gauze can be very very different um, but if I show you what I mean this is the fabric it's been pre-washed but you can see from it it really is very very spongy and crinkly which I haven't ever come across before with a double gauze it really really is very very crinkly and I didn't know how to treat it when I'm sewing it I've done a little experiment to see if I press it, what it looks like and how that holds up. So I have pressed this and it hasn't bounced back. I pressed this a couple of hours ago and I then put it, also put it through the wash as well to see what happened after it was washed, which is why I've overlocked the edges just to see how it would behave in the wash. In the wash, it did wrinkle up a little bit more, but definitely not as much as this. So my question to hopefully someone out there who will know what to do with this, should I cut out my pattern pieces with it all wrinkly like this, if that is the true nature of the fabric, or should I press it to get it looking like this and then cut out my pattern pieces? Because my worry is when I'm sewing it, is it going to end up looking like this or not as much as this, but a little bit more wrinkly and it's just not going to work. It's not going to fear. It's going to be really uncomfortable to wear. I'm also thinking of making it into a blouse that has a, a collar. So is that going to work? I don't know if I can even sew interfacing onto this kind of fabric. If it's that wrinkly, is it going to stick to it? Is it going to come unstuck? So if you've ever worked with a double gauze like this, please let me know in the comments down below because I'm kind of at a dead end with it. I, I just don't know how to treat it. I don't want to spend ages making a lovely blouse and it just to be a complete waste of time because it doesn't work. So please let me know below. Let me know below if you have any experience with that kind of fabric. So that is me for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you would like to hit subscribe, I would love it. And also give my video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it, which I hope you have. Um, I hope you managed to get some sewing done and I will see you soon. Bye.